They average right at 80 points a game, so they're not getting away from St. Mary's here in the first half, and they didn't foul that much. So good job defensively by St. Mary's. They go down to the freshman, Harris, too strong. Sacre an offensive rebound, though. Hold it with a leaner. A five-point lead for St. Mary's. Or for Gonzaga, pardon me. This is the Zags' largest lead. Do you know how difficult that shot was, Bob? It looked easy, but that was over two 6'11 performers on the defensive end. He's moving forward. He throws it over their hands and gets it off the glass. Steindl knocks down a three. Steindl. Why the crowd? Nice job by St. Mary's answering coming out of the half. Sacre forces one up. The rebound down to Ben Allen. And to back up what you were talking about, Stephen, on the box score, neither team credited with any fast break points in the first half. And a nice reverse by Omar Samhan. Second time of night we've seen him do that. Go away from the pressure of the defense, use the rim to shield himself from the defender. Ball play. Holden, a pull up, too strong. And St. Mary scores as well in the 80s, but I think this pace will favor them on the road. Gray with the intercept. In transition, off the window. Elias Harris. Elias Harris gets away a lot of times with dipping his shoulder and drawing contact into the defender. He's going to have to be careful about that because guys are going to scout him and play for that contact. Sam Hand fades away over Sacre, scores again. He's got 18. Ooh. Make me have the bitter beer face over here. Just the <laughs> contact spin away, fade away over Sacre. Sacre missed everything. And it's knocked out of bounds by Elias Harris. We've seen the full arsenal tonight from Omar Sandman. Young players, this is why your fundamentals have to be strong. Look at the big fella go with his left hand off the bounce to get underneath the rim. That's good fundamental basketball by Omar Sandman. Good job of Matt Bolden pressuring the basketball. He and Demetri Goodson forcing St. Mary's to be outside of their comfort zone. To the corner, Allen for three. That one hit the backboard first. Offensive rebound. Sam Hans put back won't go. And Gray the rebound. Here comes Bolden. Nice defense by Sackery without foul. Goodson from the corner. And Sackery runs down the long rebound. Gray, an NBA three. In and out. Wow. Steven Gray continues to struggle from long range. Bob, every time that I played and you're struggling, you want to get that layup down. That hand comes up short this time, tips it. Sacre able to wall him off. Goodson on the drop. Scores off the glass. Well, Dimitri Goodson, last three games, Really getting to the well at will. Teams having a difficult time of containing his penetration. McConnell tried to flip one back for the cutting Sam hand right to Harris. Harris drives it. Scores plus the foul. <laughs> Elias Harris giving us a glimpse of the future of him being a three man with his ability to handle the basketball change directions take the bump and get it off glass that's where this young man's future is going to be he's playing the four position right now gonzaga but his future rests at the three position being a small four that foul was the third on ben allen and allen staying in the game mike harris the father of elias harris with a fist pump he's here tonight he was a military dad, raised his son over in Germany. And Elias played for the German national team, the 2009 European Championships. Lavadova works his way to the free throw line. Bumped from behind by Gray. And
step aside. 15.55 to go. In regulation time, we'll find out who Steve's best in the West are when we come back. Now. Seen some movement from last week to this week. Yeah, definitely. You uh, take a look here. And let's take a look at last week's Gonzaga holding up the top. Cal bringing up the rear out of the Pac-10. Let's take a look at this week. A little movement. The top top half stays pretty much the same. San Diego State moves up as a result of UNLV getting beaten by New Mexico, and then Portland dropping. Really getting smashed here last week by Gonzaga. You think Drop. Cal might eventually find their way into the top 25 and get a ranked team back into the mix for the Pac-10? How long could it possibly have been since the Pac-10 was top 25 free? It's been a long time, Bob, and it's, it's, it's interesting because there's not really terrible teams in the Pac-10, but there aren't really good teams in the Pac-10 either. There's just a bunch of good teams, not great teams, but good teams and so if they could provide some separation and get on a roll they may be able to crack that top 25. And Portland right now is a 16 point lead over San Diego in their game tonight. Bolden a little floater in the lane. He's tough to stop. I can't say enough about that young man. The intricacies and the subtleties of Matt Bolden's game are what is so sweet with the off shoulder without the charge creating the space for the, the, the bounce. Steindl with the ball fake, and then Harris took it right off the rim. Out of bounds off Goodson, though. So it will be St. Mary's basketball. This was close to basket interference. I agree. It looked like it was up there over the cylinder, and here comes Elias Harris. Oh, awfully close. He's right on the rim. Not over the cylinder, though, so probably a good no call. Elias Harris. That type of athlete that can live at that level all day long. Steindl with the drive, shovels it off to Sam Hand with the foul call. I believe they'll get Elias Harris. ESPN Saturday primetime heads to Lexington, a big showdown in the SEC at 9 Eastern. Number two, Kentucky and John Wall against number 12, Tennessee. Saturday night primetime presented by DirecTV, part of Rivalry Week. Coverage begins with college game day driven by State Farm at 8 Eastern. Were you surprised? Not that Vanderbilt beat Tennessee the other night, but that they whooped them. I mean, it wasn't a contest. Well, when you look at Tennessee, to me, Bruce Pearl has to be a candidate for coach of the year. Based on the incident with Tyler Smith losing your best player and then coming into the SEC, knocking off Kansas when they were number one, you knew at some point they were going to have a lull or a drop off and Vanderbilt was playing some of their best basketball when they popped Tennessee but don't sleep on the ball.